Okay, this is Mrs. Wallace, and today we're going to be talking about the history of printmaking and how printmaking has changed the world. Can you think of an example of printmaking? I bet you can. Printmaking is all around us. You can see money is printed, comic strips, magazines, and books, but the clothes that you wear and the tags that are printed even the food that we eat, all the packages and everything that's in the stores are all printed. Our world is consumed with printmaking. And printmaking has been around forever. Here you see, even cavemen did prints. They actually did stencils and they blew powdered rock pigment on top of the caves. And the Sumerians in 500 BC made their very first imprint from a carved little um, tube. Printmaking originated in China after paper was invented around 105 AD, and this is a woodblock. And they used this technique for many thousands of years, and then later in uh, 1040 AD, they discovered how to move that around into the first movable type. The earliest books were rolls of paper on animal skin called scrolls. Books have been made for thousands of years. The first printed book was made in Korea in 1377. A German machine maker named Johannes Gutenberg invented the printing press in 1455. He was very motivated, motivated to make some money. And he was able to print and sell the first Bible in Europe. And this allowed the average person to own and read their own book. It was an exciting time of new ideas. And this was called the Renaissance. And during the Renaissance, artists were inspired to use the printing press to make prints so that everybody could have art in their own homes. Rembrandt and Albert Durer were some of the first artists and printmakers of their time. Um, they illustrated books and they made prints of some of their paintings that other people couldn't afford. Japanese woodblock prints were popular from 1603 to 1868. Japanese masters such as Hiroshin, Hukasai, and Utamero inspired modern art. And you can see there's so many colors on these and every single color was carved in a different block of wood. So some of these had, you know, up to like eight different blocks of wood. They were intricate, they were tedious, but they were um, carefully crafted and designed to have really beautiful compositions. And this is what really inspired modern artists like Van Gogh who loved their intense colors and their dramatic angles, cut off edges, and close-ups. They had bold lines and beautiful colors and Van Gogh collected these prints for himself and he even painted himself in front of his collection of prints. And later on in 1796 they, they developed what was called lithography which is where you take a grease pencil and you draw on a surface of stone and you were able to um, make multiple prints that were cheaper and faster and uh, were able to make more of them. So Toulouse-Lautrec popularized this method in Europe and also inspired Art Nouveau styles of um, artists to make posters as well. This was the very beginning of graphic design. And later, lithography became commercialized, and it turned into mass-produced reproductions like comic strips and magazines. This was, you know, really what you see today. Printmaking has been made it easier for artists to express their art to more audiences. Here you can see that the music label covers and skateboard designers use print and fabric designs like... Um, artists such as Claire Birch and even Andy Warhol used prints to reproduce and duplicate images then from having to do them from scratch with his pop art. A variety of multiple materials and surfaces have been made and the possibilities are really endless. Printmaking is so much fun and I hope that you um, enjoy trying to make a print today and there's many methods that are here on this lesson and I hope that you have fun trying one of them. Take care!